In this tutorial, we're going to look at Monex Revolution form customization. What form customization is, is a set of rules that allows you to turn on and off settings in a resource for particular users. You can create multiple sets of rules and apply them to different user groups so that they have different access to the different settings. So let me give you an example. If I cl click on my events page here, I'm signed in right now as admin, and admin has full access to all the settings in a resource. And so you can see all of these resources here, uh, all of the tabs, page settings, template variables, access permissions. And so what form customization allows you to do is turn off these so that for a particular user or user group, you they don't see these fields if you don't want them to. The beauty of this is it allows you to really customize the manager for the user experience so that they don't get unnecessary fields or settings that can maybe destroy pages or just even confuse them. And so it really helps to give the user the best experience that they have for their skill level. In order to create form customization, we have to go into the security tab and then the form customization uh, link. And what this does is it brings us up to the screen where we can start creating these sets of rules. Now, a profile is basically a collection of rules, and you have to have a profile and assign it to a user group. So I'm going to create a new profile. I'm going to call it Content Admins. Okay, so I'm creating a profile that's going to be assigned to my Content Admins group. Set it as active, you can give it a description if you want, and hit save. Now by default, it doesn't as assign it to the user group, you have to go in and do that. And to do, do that, I right click edit, click on user groups, and then I'm going to add the user group for content admins. Hit save. Now I'm creating a profile that only applies to the users in the content admin group and you can see now that it is applied to that group. Now let's go in and actually create the set of rules that's going to control what the user sees. Again, right click on Content Admins, click Edit, and it's going to ask you to create a new set. What a set of is, is basically a set of rules, but they're based on two criteria, either the Create Resource so if you're adding a new page or a new resource or the update resource, here you can see them here under the action. So depending on what action you're taking, you, you create a set for that particular uh, action. So I'm going to start with a create resource and I'm also going to assign a template to it. Now the beauty is of course that you can assign different sets of rules to different templates. So if you have two or three templates, and they have, they have specific requirements for what settings you want the user to see, then depending on which template they pick, when they're creating a page, it will limit uh, those settings. So that's really, it's really flexible. Uh, and just for this particular purpose, we're going to talk about the constraint field and constraint later. Uh, but for this overview, we'll just simply uh, create this new set and we're going to apply it to the, our demo template. So here it is, I've created one, a set, and we actually have to go in and choose what settings we want. So I'm going to right click on this and choose edit. And now it brings me to the actual settings that go along with this particular set of rules. So is folder, is it a container, rich text, is it published on? So what I can do is I can turn on and off all of these settings for this particular uh, user group and for this particular template when they're creating. So let's just go through and check, uncheck some of these. Okay, we'll just uh, randomly uncheck some of them and maybe you don't want them to choose a template. For example, if you only have one template, then it, it makes sense just to hide it so it doesn't confuse the user. Uh, we certainly would want to most likely leave them to published or not published. 
uh, link attributes, intro text, some of these that maybe aren't um, used very often. I like to turn off the parent, the menu index, because I like them to use drag and drop and not worry about these settings. Okay, so I've got, I've got a set of, of rules that are going to be applied to whenever somebody creates a resource using the demo template. So I'm going to save that. You can also hide tabs. So I'm actually going to hide the settings tab because I don't want anything to be seen there. And I don't want them to no even notice about the access permissions. So I'm going to turn that off. So I'm going to save that. And you can even pick and choose which particular uh, template variables they're allowed to see. I'm just going to turn these off. So I've really customized this particular template based on when they create a resource. I'm going to save that, just make sure it's saved. I'm going to go back to my uh, main screen. Now, the beauty is, of course, I've got this set of rules. I don't want to have to recreate the whole set again for the update action. So all I do is hit duplicate, and it creates an exact duplicate of those settings. I go in and edit, and now I'm going to change it from the create resource to the update resource. I'm going to make it active. And now you'll see that all the settings that I had before are still checked and unchecked. I don't have to go through and do them again. The same tabs, same template variables, and I can hit save. And now I have effectively duplicated that particular uh, set of rules. So I'm going to go back here. And now you'll see my, for this particular template, my two uh, sets of rules for updating and creating pages. Now just before we go and actually take a look at what the user will see now when they log in as part of the content admins group, a couple of quick tips here. One of the things you can do is you can export these rules, um, which is really handy for moving one site to the other. So if, you, if you're setting up sort of some standard rules that you like for your clients, you can easily export it to a XML file. You can save it on your hard drive and then when you go to the other site, you simply import that file and load it in. And if you need to make some changes, you can adjust the user group. You can adjust the template if you've got different template names. It's very flexible, but it'll keep the settings that you have here and you don't have to do it all over again. Now, again, I can set this, these rules for different templates. So I could duplicate this just for showing you here what we can do. And if I go into edit it, I can choose a different template. And then I can check and uncheck other settings that I want. So depending on what template is being used, um, they will see those particular settings. So that, that's pretty flexible too. And again, duplicating uh, the action helps a lot too. I'm just going to go in there and actually delete this. I can remove a set of rules. And so there I have my two rules that I originally started with. I'll save this. Now if I wanted to create a new set of rules for a different user group, I could duplicate this profile and assign it to a different user group. And the beauty is of course it saved all of my settings. So instead of the, uh, maybe I'm gonna, maybe there's a, an end users group. I can remove this one. So now I've got a different profile. I'm gonna go back here and call this end users. Make it active. And then I can go in and adjust the settings even more. So again, it's very flexible. Okay, so let's log out of the admin and let's actually see what the user sees as a normal editor of the admin group. So now when I go and click on the events page, I'm going to see something very different. All of a sudden, the settings that I have chosen to hide are gone. You'll notice the page settings tab is gone, access permissions tab is gone and only the template variables that I want them to see are listed. So it's very powerful 
it creates a really customized look and feel. There's more that you can do with form customization, but that's the overall sort of default uh, way of hiding settings that you don't want a user to see.